of us that keeps us honest, gives us strength, makes us noble, and finally allows us to die with pride. Even though sometimes we have to be steady and give up the thing we want the most, even our dreams. Joey was a courageous, self-sacrificing hero who danced into life and everyone who was lucky enough to be a part of his story was inspired and in awe of his love of life and his unflinching battle with death. He is an amazing superhero, one worthy of being quoted. Lord Jesus, our Redeemer, you willingly gave yourself up to death so that all might be saved and pass from death to life. We humbly ask you to comfort your servants in their grief and to receive Joey into the arms of your mercy. You alone are the Holy One. You are mercy itself. By dying, you unlock the gates of life for those who believe in you. Forgive Joey his sins and grant him a place of happiness, light, and peace in the kingdom of your glory forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are those who have died in the Lord. Let them rest from their labors, for their good deeds go with them. I did hundreds of funerals in my life, but this one definitely is hard. It is really, really hard. Now the shock of this tragedy has stunned us all. On behalf of Joey, thank you all. You guys are here because you touched Joey. Joey touched you. And he became the person he was because of his friends and the people around him. Joey was always the nicest kid. Just really was a, one of the bright spots of North Hunter Inn, which just wanted to show how much love Joey had in his heart and just what a good kid he was. It was an honor to be able to coach and teach Joey. And I want to thank you, Joseph and Gina, for sharing with him and the life to celebrate that we, we were able to be with him. But I just want to thank you that we had the opportunity to interact with such an extraordinary young man. When I think about Joey, the thing I think about like most is that he was never angry, frustrated, or like he was never mad. He was always in a good mood. He always put other people in a good mood and just shows who he was as a, as a friend, as a brother, and as, as a teammate. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you I haven't met yet, my name is DJ Wright, and on behalf of my family and our care team, our, our thoughts and prayers are certainly with all of you. I get to meet a lot of awesome people in my funeral ministry. Unfortunately, it happens to be at some of the worst times in their life. And the Edwards family is no exception to that rule. I did not know Joey other than, like everyone in this room over the last year, hearing about this brave young man's courageous battle, a battle which, as I told mom and dad, he did not lose. And if any of you came here today thinking that, I would ask you to just stop and think a little differently going forward. It's my honor and privilege to welcome all of you who are with us virtually today as well. I know uh, we have uh, a lot of his friends who uh, knew him through his older, by not much older, twin siblings who are just as gracious as their mother and father and who uh, were a good big sister and big brother to their little brother who was taller than both of them. Um, <laughs> sorry, Dom, I couldn't. <laughs> but I go back to not knowing Joey, but I do know him. I know him because the love that has come through this place today is something that I don't see often. To say that 
North Hunterdon is a family is putting it mildly. I must tell all of you young people, and I can say that now as my hair turned a different color a couple months ago, watching all of you be so gracious with one another, caring for one another, not clicking up, as was the days when I was growing up, watching you simply be there for one another in your grief and in your sadness shows me that you're all united in your love for Joey and this family. And that says everything I need to know about him because he brought you all together to do that. We're going to do a couple things today. And again, given the size of the crowd, I'm going to ask for everybody's patience and everybody's listening to directions to follow exactly what needs to happen here today. First and foremost, the last bus leaves at around 5.15. We will be concluded by that time, but please check your watches. 5.15 is when the last shuttle bus is leaving. And again, we thank North Hunterdon for being gracious enough to provide those uh, for all of us today. But what we're going to do in a moment is we're going to have our traditional vigil service, and then I'm going to have some words, and then we're going to hear from several uh, people who want to come forward and speak from their hearts. We can't open it up to everybody because that's impossible with a crowd of this size, but uh, I'm going to give you some homework. I know just what a bunch of high school people want to hear is homework, um, but I think it's homework you'll all like, so... Uh, that will uh, lift your hearts and your minds. But first and foremost, uh, Joey had a faith that can move mountains. We know that. Anybody facing um, certain things that he faced over the last 11 months, uh, he couldn't do that alone. Uh, he did that with uh, a greater being by his side. And one of the uh, most beautiful things that we do in the Catholic rite of committal is not just the mass and not just the burial service but what we're about to do now which is what the vigil service and when you stop and think that this has been done for thousands of years before there were funeral homes people gathered around their tents where they would bring the person who had died and they did these same beautiful prayers and beautiful words and deacon and father I have not actually checked but one day I'm going to because my favorite word appears in these texts over and over. It's my favorite four-letter word, Gina, not the one you may be thinking. It's not love either, which is my second, but it's hope. And a lot of you have a lot of anger right now, and that's okay. A lot of you are wondering, Hope, Deej, we're burying a 17-year-old kid who was one of the good ones how could God do that? I'm not, here to, I'm not here to try to answer that, neither are they. But I promise the Lord's shoulders are big enough for you to put it on. So I encourage you that no matter how angry you are, how sad you are, whatever religion you are, you listen to the words that are going to come from these gentlemen and you open your minds and your hearts as Joey did and as now Joey knows and hopefully you walk out of here just a little bit stronger than when you came in, knowing that God loves all of us and that Joey sits by his right hand. I'm honored to be able to introduce a, a dear friend who uh, is also the grandfather of one of Joey's friends uh, and also, I believe, baptized Joey when he was brought to church by Gina and Joe so many, many years ago, 17, as a matter of fact. I'm going to ask Deacon Dennis to come forward and lead us in our vigil service. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the God of hope give you the fullness of peace, and may the Lord of life always be with you. My brothers and sisters, we believe that all the ties of friendship and affection which knit us as one throughout our lives does not unravel with death. I'm going to repeat that because sometimes 
when I start talking, we maybe have uh, other things on our mind, but I think it's important to remember this. We believe that all the ties of friendship and affection which knit us as one throughout our lives do not unravel with death. Lord our God, the death of our brother Joey recalls our human condition and the brevity of our lives on earth. But for those who believe in your love, death is not the end, nor does it destroy the bonds that you forge in our lives. We share the faith of your son's disciples and the hope of the children of God. Bring the light of Christ's resurrection to this time of testing and pain as we pray for Joey and for those who love him. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We know that our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be, should be destroyed. We have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. So we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The response to the psalm will be, the Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my salvation. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Hear, O Lord, the sound of my call. Have pity on me and answer me. Your presence, O Lord, I seek. Hide not your face from me. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage, be stout-hearted, and wait for the Lord. The Lord is my light, is my salvation. The next reason will be from the, uh, one of the Gospels. Normally, if we were in church, uh, we would ask you to rise, but on this occasion, you can remain seated, those who are, are seated. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When the Jews who were, who were in the house comforting Mary saw her get up so quickly and go out, they followed her, thinking that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Mary went to Jesus. As soon as she saw him, she threw herself at his feet, saying, Lord, if you had been there, my brother Lazarus would not have died. At the sight of her tears and those of the Jews who had come with her, Jesus was greatly distressed, and with profound sigh, he said, Where have you put him? They said, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. And the Jews said, See how much he loved him. But there were some who remarked, He opened the eyes of the blind man. Could he not have present, prevented this man's death? Sighing again, Jesus reached the tomb. It was a cave with a stone to close the opening. Jesus said, take the stone away. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. This is the fourth day since he died. Jesus said, have I not told you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took the stone away. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, 
I thank you for hearing my prayer. I myself know that you hear me always, but I speak for the sake of these who are standing around me so that they may believe it was you who sent me. When he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands and a cloth over his face. Jesus said to them, unbind him, let him go free. Now many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what he did believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to Lord you, Jesus Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you who do not know me, and that would be most of you, as just mentioned by DJ, my name is Dennis Webster, and I am a deacon at the Church of St. Catherine of Siena in Pittstown, which is the parish of the Edwards family. I am in retirement, uh, so-called, but on special occasions I come out, and this certainly is one of those special occasions. As a deacon, as a husband, as a father, as a grandfather, as a member of this community for nearly 40 years, I share in your grief, in your distress, your sadness, perhaps some of you even your despair, as we gather today and tomorrow to celebrate the short but power-packed life of a family member, a friend, a schoolmate, a member of our local church, Joey Edwards. As DJ indicated, some 17 years ago, to be exact, on March 25th of 2007, two parents, Joseph and Gina, accompanied by their young daughter and son, Madison and Dominic, along with other family members, came to the Church of St. Catherine of Siena and brought along the youngest member of their family, Joey, to be formally welcomed into the parish of St. Gath Catherine and I, as indicated, baptized, christened him. I was the church's minister. I was fortunate enough. I was blessed to be that individual representing the church on that day. The question posed to me as we gathered at the entryway of the church, I posed it to Gina and Joseph, was, what name do you give this child? The response was Joseph Michael. I next asked, what do you ask of God's church? They responded, baptism. Before proceeding forward towards the altar of the church, I stated that Gina and Joseph would be the first teachers of their son in the practice of the faith. And I then welcomed Joey as the newest member of the church of the family of St. Catherine of Siena and marked him as a disciple of Christ by tracing the cross with my finger on his forehead, and I invited his parents and his godparents, Tricia Stevens and Christopher Morosi, to do the same. We then walked down the aisle together and proceeded to complete the baptism, which concluded in the taking of pictures. Joey continued his religious education at the Church of St. Catherine and received all his sacraments of initiation, the next being First Holy Communion and then finally confirmation, the last of which Joey received a few years ago during COVID. Frankly, I do not recall if I participated in that confirmation that year, and if I did, Joey would have been one of many masked children that day. I am certain all of you who read the updated obituary were touched as I was by the perhaps, quote, author unknown, close quote, or maybe by Joey himself, where the words of wisdom were espoused by maybe a middle-aged adult, maybe an octogenarian, maybe a 17-year-old young man, no matter what age, composed by someone who knew God on a personal level. And I echo those words that life often does not seem fair, that there are obstacles but we human beings have the will, the tenacity, the determination, the resolve to fight what may appear to some to be a bitter end. 
Jesus our Lord was divine, but was also human and experienced like no other challenges of life spoken by this author in this note from the cell phone. Jesus, as you heard me proclaim a little while ago, showed the exact same emotions that you and I are experiencing now at the loss of his friend, Lazarus. The, ba the Bible, sacred scripture, God's word, tells us in no uncertain terms that Jesus, God, wept. In plain, ordinary language, Jesus cried at the death of his friend, just as we cry over our loss of Joey. But we know from this account of Jesus that there was and is more to come. There is no bitter end. In the words of Joey's family following the note from the phone, we can be assured Joey will experience the sweetest peace God has to offer. Now the question for all of us who heard the gospel I just read follows the last line, verse 45, wherein it is written, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did believed in him. The question for us today is, do we believe in him? If we do, then we thereby receive some comfort in gathering today as one family united in Christ. In closing, Gina, Joseph, Madison and Dominic, family members, once we have heard the words of love to be delivered by those who will follow me, the eulogies, once we have exited the room and you are left here to yourselves with Joey, I would urge you to consider repeating part of what you did on that March 25th of 2007 when you brought Joey to the church where he began his discipleship and commitment to Jesus, and that is trace the cross on his forehead as he concludes his mission on earth. At this week's Masses, the responsorial psalm was, Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. It seems to me that prayer is uniquely relevant as we gather today. To the following, I would ask you to respond, Lord, have mercy. Let us turn to Jesus Christ with confidence and faith in the power of his cross and resurrection. Risen Lord, pattern of our life forever, we ask you, Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. Promise and image of what we shall be, we ask you, Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. Son of God, who came to destroy sin and death, we ask you, Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Word of God who delivered us from the fear of death, we ask you. Lord, have mercy. Crucified, Lord, forsaken in death, raised in glory, we ask you. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, gentle shepherd who brings rest to our souls, give peace to Joey forever, we ask you. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bless those who mourn and are in pain. Bless Joey's family and friends who gather here today. We ask you, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray in the coming of the kingdom in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. There uh, is a concluding prayer, but I will leave that uh, until those who speak have spoken, and then we will conclude at that point. Thank you, Deacon Dennis, for your always thoughtful words. I believe there's a hero in all of us that keeps us honest, gives us strength, makes us noble, and finally allows us to die with pride. Even though sometimes we have to be steady and give up the thing we want the most, even our dreams. This quote from Spider-Man 
perfectly sums up the young man we meet here to honor today. Joey was a courageous, self-sacrificing hero who danced into life and everyone who was lucky enough to be a part of his story was inspired and in awe of his love of life and his unflinching battle with death. He is an amazing superhero, one worthy of being quoted. Again, as we gather to celebrate the life and mourn the death of Joey, we must remember we're here for his loving parents, his siblings, his grandparents, his aunts, his uncles, his cousins, his family, which is all of you. You all deserve and need to understand how you were expressed to me by Joe, Gina, and the twins. You were all expressed to me as family. There was no his side, her side, their friends, mom's friends, dad's friends. It was all Joey's crew, Joey's gang. Everything each one of you have done over the last 11 months especially has touched them in ways you can't possibly know. So I go back to that homework I said I was going to give you. I'm not going to wait till everybody speaks. I'm going to give it to you now. And the homework is simple. One day all of us are going to sit in these four chairs up front with someone we love behind us. We all have an obligation to whoever is sitting in the front row, as I like to call it. We have an obligation to remind them of the goodness that their loved one puts in our life. Those of you who've heard me make my announcements today continuously as you went through the back room, what did I say? I said, we want you to write and share the stories of how Joey has touched your life, how Joey is touching your life, and how Joey will continue to touch your life. We don't use past tense here. Past means something is over and done. You can't tell me that this young man's life is over because he's in a casket. As a matter of fact, I think he touches people now in ways he never did. His strength and tenacity will last long after these mere words. So your homework is simple. When all of you his age go off to college and become successful, which you will, and when you're doing something that makes you think about Joey, some of you are smiling because you know where I'm going with this. I want you to pop open the computer. I won't say a pen and paper because I don't think your age knows what pen and paper is. But pick up the iPad or the cell phone or whatever. Send the twins, send mom and dad a note letting them know that Joey is still touching your heart. Tell them a story that maybe you were just thinking of randomly. I don't care if it's 20 years from now. They want to hear Joey's name said like it was the household word. It always was. Why should Joey stop being talked about because he's physically out of sight? So your homework is not for tonight. It's not for tomorrow. It's for the next six months. It's for the next six years. It's for the next six decades. Keep bringing him up. Because guess what, folks? You may think, well, I don't want to get them upset. How can you get them upset when they're already thinking about him 24 hours, seven days a week? You can't. You can only remind them of the goodness that still exists through all of us as we honor our brother. I'm going to ask, we have, a, a rep we have some representatives from North Football. I don't know where they are. He's around here somewhere. There he is. I'm going to have him come up and uh, share with us some of his thoughts. Uh, 
My name is uh, Coach Blair McGinnis, for those of you that might not know, um, and I want to share a couple words on behalf of North Hunter football community to you guys today. Um, in the book of Ecclesiastes 3, 1, and 4, it says, For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. Psalm 34, 18 says that the Lord is near the brokenhearted. In the Gospels, as was already shared, we know how Jesus responded when he lost those that he loved. The shortest verse in the Bible is found, as it was said already in John 11, 35, that Jesus wept. Today we weep and we mourn with you. Today we also remember Joey in the moments we had the privileges of sharing with him and celebrate the life that he lived. It was an honor to be able to coach and teach Joey. In education and coaching, you can see the evidence of parents that raised their kids the right way. Joey was raised exceptionally well. We as teachers and coaches get a moment to interact with and work with kids. And I want to thank you, Joseph and Gina, for sharing with him and the life to celebrate that we, we were able to be with him. And I just want to thank you that we had the opportunity to interact with such an extraordinary young man. And on behalf of North Boy, thank you for that. I came across an article earlier this week from an author named Tim Challies. He was talking about family memories. And there was a quote that really stood out when it came to reflecting on Joey's life as I was thinking about it this week. It goes, there are many of my best memories are of events that happened one time or perhaps a few times. But my favorite of all is an event that happened day after day and year after year. A skilled artist can take a thousand photographs and collate them to make a single image. And in much in that way, I see a single memory that's probably a, a collage of a thousand. For me, and I'm sure a lot of you, that single memory, and when I was reading the obituary today, was, was Joey's smile. Was that consistent Joey smile that he would always crack. My first football memory of Joey came from a passing camp when he, was spent his, he stepped in as a sophomore against varsity level competition. He caught a pass against Del Barton. He got hit when it was supposed to be touched. At first, I didn't really know who caught the ball. I was kind of looking around. But I can remember that play, and I can remember being mad at Del Barton. I know, saw Macy, sorry, buddy. Because um, <laughs> they weren't following the rules. Not that they're saying you don't. But I remember this kid just pops up, big smile on his face after he just got hit with no pads on. And I thought, who is that kid? And I loved it. That was Joey's whole career, though. In the class, in the hallways, whatever it was, that's the picture that I will see, that contagious, crack smile. Norse football model that was set up by Coach Clay years ago and it was embraced by a lot of the kids who are here in this room um, was family. Coach Robinson has been continuing that on. So anybody that's played football with Joey, a family was our model. And that model is about the guys on the team truly caring for one another. Not the wins, not the losses. And as you can see here today, these guys really cared about Joey. And Joey really cared about these guys. And this is why it hurts so much. Joey was a leader by his actions. He was just fun to be around in any situation. In class, I can remember Joey, Zundi, Tyler. They, I just have a picture of them sitting in the back row, always sitting there uh, in the back, always laughing about something. And Tyler was always trying to keep a straight face while Joey and Zundi were laughing. Um, in football, I remember him being a great teammate and a player. Um, he would make a big catch. He would get hit hard. Um, and you knew he was just popping back up and smiling. He truly enjoyed play, in playing football with his teammates. He was an absolute pleasure to coach. He was a teammate in the truest sense of the word. All he ever wanted to do was to contribute to his football family and whatever he was asked to do. And as Coach Clay used to always say, doing his 111th. This season, he still had that smile on his face. Whether it was at practices he came to or on game days, it was a highlight for me on Friday nights to see that crack smile of his on the sideline. One of my favorite parts of Friday nights the entire fall was seeing Joey on the sideline, talking to his friends and teammates, being able to go up to him and just give him a big hug. And we just got to talk about normal things. I told him I loved him. I told him we were praying for him. My two boys, little boys, always reminded me to pray for Joey. Um, and we just got to talk about football, normal things in life. We even talked a few times about how Zundel could be a better blocker, but <laughs> I don't know if you're there, Zion. Sorry, buddy. He said you should get better, but that's OK. <laughs> this season, I brought him up in many pregame talks. I challenged the kids to go out there and give their absolute best because you don't know when your last time will come. And this is a way that you will get to honor the gift that you've been given to play football for your teammates and give absolutely everything you got, just like Joey did. Who he was on the field at practice, in a game, or in the classroom was always consistent. And the word that I keep thinking about, he was truly authentic. You hear it in the stories tonight, I'm sure, and I hear it talking around the room. 
It didn't matter. The situation, location did not change who he was. He was truly authentic. He had a contagious, authentic smile and personality. In closing, uh, there's a quote from a movie, which he watched because he watched it in my class, which many people in this room might have done too. Um, the film's called The Way, and there's a dad talking to his son about planning out his life and what he thinks he should be doing and what not to be doing. And the son simply responds to the dad with this statement that really encapsulates, I think, this moment. The son's name is Daniel. He goes, you don't choose a life, dad. You live one. Tonight, the North Hunter football family and community, we celebrate the life that Joey lived. And we should all go on in this life honoring him with how we live our life, to be authentic in all circumstances. There's a verse in the book of Romans that encapsulates our moment here as well, and I think the way that Joey also lived his life. In the book of Romans, chapter 12, 15 to 16, it says, Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position, and do not be conceited. So as a North Hunter uh, family tonight, a, a North Hunter football family, we're here to mourn the loss of Joey with you. But again, we're also here to celebrate and honor Joey's life, a life that was well lived. You can absolutely clap for that, Coach. That was beautiful. Thank you for your, your heartfelt words. I'm going to ask the first couple rows here, minus the front row, Joey's immediate family. Did any of you want to share? I know it's been a long day for you, but any of you, grandma, grandpa, anybody? OK. All right. Did any of Joey's friends want to come up and share? Again, we have for a couple of people. Uh, just the way that Joey touched your heart, again, you know, we're asking you to keep it just to like 30, 45 seconds apiece, but I know that's hard, but if anybody has uh, something that they really want to share with this group, we want to give you that opportunity. Just catch my eye, introduce yourself when you come up here, and we'll go from there. That counts for the other rooms as well if you want to make your way up. How do I know? Come on up, man. Let's tell everybody who you are. So I'm uh, I'm Chaz Ranges, <laughs> great friend of Joey's. Uh, he was the best friend you could ever ask for. All the car rides, all the going out to eat with him, all the other fun stuff. And I just want to come up and say a, a quote that my mom told me, or a question that my mom told me. She said, "If you were God and you had all the flowers in front of you, wouldn't you want to pick the best ones?" Joey was for sure one of the best flowers in the garden, and he's always going to be with us watching over us, and I'm going to miss him, but we lost a friend but gained an angel. That's a beautiful quote, and I'm going to challenge you with one more. Pablo Neruda wrote, you can cut all the flowers, but you can't stop spring from coming. There's a flower that's been cut. Spring will come again if you let it, and Joey would only want spring to come to all of your hearts again. You have to remember that. Who else would like to come forward? Hey, everybody. Um, my name is Nate. Uh, you guys probably know I am, but, um, so uh, over the past couple of weeks in school, most of us really haven't been going to class or <laughs> We've just been in our guidance counselors, so I just want to share a quick story that uh, Mr. DiLorenzo told me. I don't know if he's still here, but um, it just really goes to show who Joey was as a person. He said that someone came down into his office a couple of days ago and said that he didn't really know Joey. He only talked to him a couple of times, but Joey never failed to say hello to him in the hallway whenever we were walking with him, and just Joey was always the nicest kid and just really was a, one of the bright spots of North Hunterdon, which sometimes is hard to find at our school, but <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to show how much love Joey had in his heart and just what a good kid he was and how much we're going to miss him. Thanks, Nate. Would anyone else like to share?
just going to give it a minute to anybody from the back wants to come. Yeah, see, I would have had money at you as one of the first, but okay. Oh, my. It's much worse than I thought. Um, Room of love, man. Yeah. I don't think you can do it. <laughs> uh, Tell a story. Johnny, what's a good memory? Um, First thing that comes to mind. <laughs> That's PG-13. You wrote Getting Lean. Huh? Yeah, I wrote, me, me and Joey, whenever we were together, we were a sight for sore eyes. That's what I would say. People, a lot of people would say I look a lot like Joey. I don't know if it's true, but he was a ladies' man. He was a great kid, and he was even a better best friend. So that's all I want to say. Thank you. <laughs> Who else would like to come forward and share a, a thought? There he is. Uh, hey everyone, I'm Leo. Um, when I think about Joey, the thing I think about like most is that he was never angry, frustrated, or like, like he was never mad. And there was times when I would. I would try to like make him mad. We, 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 would, we would get on him and like, I would try to see if I could ever burst that, like, take that smile off his face just for, like a second. I know it sounds mean, but I would just, like, I would try and like, it just ne never worked. He'd always have that smile. He'd always, he'd fire something back at me. And it was just, it was, it was always, it was always a good time. And I think that's like really shows his character. He would never like, he would never get angry. He was never frustrated. He was always like, he was always in a good mood. He always put other people in a good mood and just shows who he was as a, as a friend, as a brother, and as, as a teammate. So I'm going to have you guys just part your heads for a minute because there's something on the wall for those of you who are with us virtually that I put as you got near the casket and it's funny you said exactly what you said, Leo, because what that passage from Philippians says is, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. I selected that for Joey very specifically, and I selected that for all of you as you came forward, as you were nearing the casket of somebody you loved, to remember that Joey's character, Joey's essence, Joey's Joey, was always trying to do what's right, to do what's good, to do what's lovely. And if we can make that and put that into practice, See, it's good to talk about Joey, right? It's good to, you know, think about him and stuff. But wouldn't it be even better to, as Monsignor Fulton, who many of you know from Our Lady of Victories in Baptist Town, used to say, to put flesh on gospel values? To actually put all the good stuff that you loved about Joey? Although you'll never have his hair. <laughs> wouldn't it be good to put that stuff into action? in your own way because you see Joey loved you for you you for you you for you he didn't want you to be like anybody else he wanted you to be you he wanted you to use your gifts given by that good and loving creator of us all but if we can take a little bit of Joey and splash it on ourselves I think we're making this world a lot better place dad hmm. kind of maybe sort of yeah Mom, you want to stand with them? Yeah. Maybe say something. So I think everything's been said. You guys, everybody, 
We, we love you guys from the bottom of our hearts. Um, you know, on behalf of Joey, thank you all. You guys are here because you touched Joey. Joey touched you. And he became the person he was because of his friends and the people around him. So, and you became a part of our family. Yes, you became a part of our family. So we just want to thank everybody. You know, I can't say enough about Joey. Um, but I know he would want me to thank you guys for taking time out of your schedules and being a part of his life. And, you know, from our family, thank you. The nurses that took care of Joey came today, and we thank you for that. Yeah. And his friends. I mean, you guys left a mark on us. You're going to continue to leave a mark on us. We, we appreciate everything about all of you. And like I said, you all contributed to who Joey is today. Um, but I can't say any more words or nice things. It's and when things get tough or hard, think think about Joey. Joey always stayed positive no matter what. With every hit he got, with every We're not bad sure where news. he came from some yeah. <laughs> but apparently he's ours, so <laughs> But the kid never complained, he never cried, he never said why me? He never was angry he smiled and he made the best of it and he he plowed through so that to me he just had the brightest light and just was such a positive kid so remember that when things are tough that stay positive and keep fighting because he's watching one percent more but yeah, thank you everybody. We, thank you. We can't thank you enough, obviously, but if you the know fact us, that you're all quiet. here is uh, <laughs> until the vodka starts flowing. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, thank you everybody. I, I can't say anything else. But. If you only carry one thing throughout your entire life, let it be hope. Let it be hope that better things are always ahead. Let it be hope that you can get through even the toughest of times. Let it be hope that you are stronger than any challenge that comes your way. Let it be hope that you are exactly where you are meant to be right now and that you are on the path to where you are meant to be. Because during these times, hope will be the very thing that carries you through. Lord Jesus, our Redeemer, you willingly gave yourself up to death so that all might be saved and pass from death to life. We humbly ask you to comfort your servants in their grief and to receive Joey into the arms of your mercy. You alone are the Holy One. You are mercy itself. By dying, you unlock the gates of life for those who believe in you. Forgive Joey his sins and grant him a place of happiness, light, and peace in the kingdom of your glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are those who have died in the Lord. Let them rest from their labors, for their good deeds go with them. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. And let perpetual, perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and the soul of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
this rice. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, in the waters of baptism, Joseph died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. pray Almighty God and Father it is our certain faith that your son who died on the cross was raised from the dead the first fruit of all who have fallen asleep grant that through this mystery your servant Joseph who has gone to his rest in Christ may share in the joy of his resurrection. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. reading from the book of wisdom the souls of the just in the hands of God and no torment shall touch them they seemed in the view of the foolish to be dead and their passing away was thought an affliction and their going forth from us utter destruction but they are in peace for it before men indeed they be punished and yet their hope of immortality chastened it a little they shall be greatly blessed because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As, go as golden furnace, 
he proved them, and the sacrificial offerings he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation they shall shine, and shall dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are within his holy ones, and his care is with the elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. We would have to be clear about those who sleep in death. Brothers, otherwise you might yield to grief, like those who have no hope. For it would be believed that Jesus dies, died and rose. God will bring forth with him from the dead those also have fallen asleep, believing in him. We say to you, as if the Lord himself had said it, that we do who live, who survive until his coming, will in no way have an advantage over those who had fallen asleep. No, the Lord himself will come down from heaven in the word of command. At the sound of the archangel's voice, heaven at the word of command, at the sound of the archangel's voice and God's trumpet, and those who had died in Christ will rise first. Then we the living, the survivors, will be caught up with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thenceforth, we shall be with the Lord unceasingly. 
console one another with the message, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to, you, Lord. to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where am I going? You know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. I think I did hundreds of funerals in my life. But this one definitely is hard. It is really, really hard. Now the shock of this tragedy has stunned us all. For those of us who knew Joey, but especially for his parents, Gina and Joseph, his siblings, Dominic and Madison, and for all family members, and you, his friends, this funeral is a nightmare from which we would love to awaken. Now at 17, the world was at Joey's feet. Life was all before him, and he reached out and grabbed it with both hands. Now those who watched him play football together with you just a few months ago, they said he seemed to be everywhere on the field pushing himself to the limit and beyond, urging his teammates to even greater efforts. 
I am told he was the same in the classroom. But this young life, full of promise, ended so abruptly. It seems so senseless and cruel. Now, whenever someone we love dies, I think we too die a little. We know that we can never be exactly the same again. A part of our life, a familiar voice, a footstep, a laugh, a gesture, has suddenly disappeared. So many hopes, so many plans are no more. Now all we have are just memories. I remember that day, July 11, 2020, when I administer the sacrament of confirmation to Joey, it was a beautiful celebration, full of love and happiness. As I anointed his forehead with the holy oil and said these words, Joseph, receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I could never ever imagine that just over three years later, I will have to stand again here and say these words, Joey, now may your soul rest in the happiness of God home. Now there were days when Joey had to endure the suffering of his own cross as cancer slowly robbed him of a vitality that had been so much a part of him. But I heard from his mother that he never, never complained. He never asked the question, why? Why it is me? He endured it with grace. Now throughout this past year, many of you have stood by him and witnessed his suffering. Now each in your own way, you have tried to bring him some measure of comfort to him and his family. And this is wonderful. And thank you for that. And this is what Jesus asked us to do. We must take care of each other in this world until the day we reach our heavenly homeland. Now today we are here in this church to celebrate the life of Joey. Now the question that is still lingering perhaps in the back of our brains is what is here to celebrate? Now in the second reading which we read here the parents have chosen the reading from St. Paul. And St. Paul said it this way. We believe that Jesus dies, died and rose again. And that it will be the same for those 
who have died in Jesus. Now, Joey was born on, on September 23rd, 2006. Six months later, on March 25th, 2007, he was baptized here in this church by Deacon Dennis. Whether he realized it or not, on that day, he had received the very, very special gift. On that day, and from that day onward, he had been called child of God. For so indeed we all are. Now during his baptism, his parents, Joseph and Gina, in Joey's name, received the baptismal candle, which is similar to the one which we have here, but of course much, much smaller. The candle is a symbol of Jesus Christ, the symbol of the light of Christ. Now, enlightened by Christ, Joey had walked through his life, even to this day, as a child of light. And I believe that he kept that flame of faith alive in his heart throughout the past 17 years. And now that his earthly journey is complete, he can go out to meet Jesus with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. See, our faith teaches us that Christ, Christians, or Christian does not merely die. A Christian who lives in Christ and dies in Christ will rise in Christ, will live in Christ forever. And Jesus assured us of that in today's gospel. He offered these comfortable words. Do not let your hearts be troubled. In my father's house are many rooms. I'm going to prepare a place for you so that where I am, there you may be also. And we believe that that is what had happened to Joey on January 27. Jesus took him to himself and gave him what he has promised, eternal life. Now he can enjoy that eternal life in the company of his family who already preceded him on that journey. Now can you imagine what that moment was like for Joey? When Jesus embraced him, took him by hand, and led him to his permanent home. I can. And I believe that there will also be such a moment for each of us when we too will complete our earthly journey and will enter into, into eternal life. I believe that there will come a day when the pain that is now in our hearts will be no more. That day we will see Joey again. That day we will discover that the ravages of cancer are powerless over him. And he's free to run, to run, to jump, to play football, to smile, and to laugh. 
see in heaven, we will all one day know the fullness of life, the fullness of joy. Today is about remembering this young man who has been deeply, deeply loved by the parents, siblings, family members and friends from the day of his birth. Now we are right to remember him. We are right to celebrate him. But we must also leave this place today willing to imitate our Savior Jesus Christ. Ready to love those who are close to us with a love that knows no limits. And then, when our turn comes, each of us will be able to go out to meet Jesus with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. What a day that will be. Joey, you will be missed. But we will meet again. By now, may your soul rest in the happiness of God's home. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to him. In baptism, Joseph received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Our brother Joey was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The family and friends of Joey seek comfort and consolation, heal their pain, and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother Joey, strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voice of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thank <laughs>
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise, for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Joseph, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For us one alone, he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying. As one man, he chose to die, so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the you fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his <coughs> disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, 
as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have called us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Joseph, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, we blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Catherine of Siena, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Kingdom. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Bless others called to his supper. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. To the Holy Eucharist, we will receive here in front, uh, both sides. And if you are Catholic and in the grace of God, just come to receive it. If you are not Catholic, you would like to come, just make the sign with the cross like that and give you a special blessing.
Please rise. <coughs> and let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that make one in Christ we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Joey. <coughs> may our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself.
times, O oh Father of mercies, we commend our brother Joey in this sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In, in peace, let us take our brother Joey to his place of rest. <coughs> you shall cross the barren desert, but you shall Oh, my God. 
My mama would say, you gotta fight for what is right. To her, I would say, I wanna give back the world some light. But it's an empty road I feel so alone I forgot what I'm fighting for When the weight of the world Keeps you up at night When you're running with no end in sight Thought you would never you could find with Christ You want to change the world But you don't know where you should start mm -hmm. But you can't give your all Unless you let God inside your heart you to bring your hearts to that moment of peace, that moment of faith, and most importantly, that moment of hope, as Deacon Dennis leads us in our committal words. We continue in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our brother Joey has gone to his rest in the peace of Christ. May the Lord now welcome him to the table of God's children in heaven. With faith and hope in eternal life, let us assist him with our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord also for ourselves. May we who mourn be reunited one day with our brother. Together may we meet Christ Jesus when he who is our life appears in glory. We read in sacred scripture from the Gospel of Matthew, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, says the Lord. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Lord Jesus Christ, by your own three days in the tomb, you hallowed the graves of all who believe in you, and so made the grave a sign of hope that promises resurrection even as it claims our mortal bodies. Grant that Joey may sleep here in peace until you awaken him to glory, for you are the resurrection and the life. Then he will see you face to face, 
and in your light will see light and know the splendor of God, for you live and reign forever and ever. Because God has chosen to call Joey from this life to himself, we commit his body to the earth. For we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. But the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory, for he is risen, the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend our brother Joey to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace him in peace and raise up his body on the last day. Our brother Joey, for our brother Joey, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me shall live even in death, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. And to these following petitions, these intercessions, please respond, Lord, have mercy. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Joey and dry the tears of those who weep. We pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. You wept at the graves of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. We pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. You raise the dead to life. Give to our brother Joey eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Our brother was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give him fellowship with all your saints, we pray to the Lord. He was nourished with your body and blood. Grant him a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Comfort us in our sorrow at the death of Joey. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope, we pray to the Lord. Remember all the good they have done. Lord, have mercy. With longing for the coming of God's kingdom, let us pray once again in the word that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. God of holiness and power, accept our prayers on behalf of your servant, Joey. Do not count his deeds against him, for in his heart he desired to do your will. As his faith united him to your people on earth, so may your mercy join him to the angels in heaven. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Please bow your head and pray for God's blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and the soul of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Dennis, for your love and support. And one of the things you never want to do is go full circle with anybody you baptize. But you're here, and I know Joey's watching down, very appreciative of your love and support and prayers. So some of you may be wondering, why Nishanik? 
It's got a beautiful tree. It's got a beautiful view. But you also have heard the name Dominic thrown around a couple times. Not just Joey's cooler, favorite older brother. But for those of you who didn't know, Big Joe almost wasn't with us. He and his best friend Dominic were unfortunately in a bad car accident right around the time of Joey's age. Dominic's buried just over here. And I couldn't help but think the minute I heard that story that Dominic was the first one there welcoming Joey to that place where there's no pain, no suffering, but only light, only peace, and only hope. So that's why we're at this spot today. And in a moment, before we go any further, I'm going to ask Gina and Joe, along with Dominic's mom and dad, who are standing right here, to take a little walk with me with the flowers that were at the head of Joey's casket, and let's place them with his guardian angel. Gina, Joe, come right around. And a special thank you to Dom's parents and his family for all their love and support. Some of you saw this blanket that was near where the family was standing. At the bottom it says, Happiness. Not in another place, but this place. Not for another hour, but this hour. That quote by Walt Whitman is also on a sign, a big sign as you leave our funeral home. 
people who don't know me might think that's a little odd to be at a funeral home. But I think after you meet me, you understand why I have it there. I am confident that those who've gone before, when we see them again, especially that smile right there, you all know that smile. I'm confident that they would want us to go on using our God-given talents to keep on fighting for what is right, to fighting for the underdog, to never meeting a stranger. So until we meet Joey again in that physical sense, may this blanket keep your hearts warm and may you always feel his presence. To say that I've been impressed with what I've seen out of the North football program would be an understatement. You gentlemen have shown a kindness, a compassion, a grace, and a wisdom that I wouldn't necessarily expect from some people your age. And I don't think that was just Joey. I think a lot of you had that ahead of time. So you should be proud, all of you, all of the, the students from North and beyond should be proud of the way you've handled yourselves over the last couple of days. And from what I've heard, many, many months since Joey was diagnosed. You were there with no preconditions to be there for him, to be there for Madison and Dominic and his mom and dad and Whoever you needed to be there for, you were just there. Don't ever stop that. Don't let the world make you cynical, ever. Stay young like Joey is and do what he would have done. And it's in that spirit that I'm going to ask some of the people who've taught you how to be that way and guided you along that way, some of his coaches, to come forward and share with us some words. On behalf of the North 100 and football team, the students and staff, please accept this football and this varsity letter as a symbol of our appreciation for the positive impact that Joey had on our community and the legacy that he lives with, leaves with us. Again, a very sincere thank you on behalf of the family. Travel safe, and of course, God bless.